Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Reference. I'm host This evening, we're going to cover uh, some discussion about the Santa Clara County Green Business Program. If you watch this show regularly, you know about a year ago, we uh, had some folks, uh, Lisa Rose was here, and we talked about the program then, and a lot has happened in the last year with the Green Business Program, with uh, climate change awareness, with the drought we're having in California. And so this concept of businesses doing things to improve uh, energy conservation, et cetera, I think is a very useful and appropriate and timely subject. So I asked Lisa to come back again. Lisa, thank you for joining us again. Pleasure to have you back Nice here. to be back, Dave. Thank you for inviting us back. And you brought some friends with you this I time, did. too. I did. I brought <laughs> some great partners in the Green Business Program. We've got Serena from PG&E. We've got Karen from Santa Clara Valley Water District and Lori from the City of Mountain View. Each of these ladies is very critical to our program, so it's nice to have everybody here at the table. Fantastic. And we're going to talk to each of you, and I've got a lot of questions mm -hmm. for you, and I want to understand how each of your activities and programs uh, works with the Green Business Program and how they interrelate. But Lisa, the first thing I wanted to find out is tell me a little bit about what's transpired in the last year. What it, how has the Green Business Program been being received in the county, and, and what's new there? It's actually just going gangbusters, if you will. Um, we've gotten so many more people that are interested. We're having phone calls daily, at least two, three, four inquiries every day. We've been certifying businesses very, very rapidly. Um, we've kind of got a little, not a backlog, but we're just really trying to work with everybody right now. So there, the interest has really gone up and we're actually, our goal this year was to certify 60 businesses and we're over 120 at this wow, point. Wow, So it's fantastic. really, it's been that's, very, very that's busy. That's more than double the target and only halfway exactly. through the year. So now do you attribute this to uh, some of the outreach that you're doing, people more aware about your, your organization or is it just the general? I think it's the general awareness. I think everybody is starting to think green. You see green everywhere you go. Um, and it used to be last year when we were here, we were still actively recruiting businesses and we really don't have to do that at all anymore. Businesses are coming to us in droves. So it's really been a kind of a, a change, if you will, um, that is very, very positive. We see a lot of people wanting to do the right thing. And that's fantastic. And uh, you told me earlier that there's been some, um, uh, all the counties in the Bay Area are now doing this. I think a year ago, a number of them were, several of them did not have an established program, but now things are uh, Bay Area wide, is that correct? Absolutely. We used to have seven counties participating. Now we have all nine Bay Area counties participating. So that's really exciting as well. Fantastic. I want to talk a little bit more in a few minutes about the businesses and you know what they would have to do, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. But first, let's find out a little bit more okay. about the other folks that are here. Lori, we're going to start with okay. you because you're with the city of Mountain View, correct? That's correct, yes. And you're responsible for the solid, solid waste and recycling solid, programs. Solid waste and recycling programs. Yes. Okay. So tell us a little bit about that from the municipality perspective, how that uh, okay. what you do there and then how that contributes to the green business program. Activity. Okay. Well, in, first of all, in order to be a, a green business, you do have to recycle and um, hopefully take other actions that will help reduce waste also. So f um, what the City of Mountain View can do is if you're not already recycling, we can set you up with our free recycling program. If you And if you are recycling already, we can come in and do a waste audit and help you figure out how to either uh, recycle things that you might not be recycling now or how to reduce waste uh, within your business in order to meet the requirements to be a green business. There you go, I guess so, because there are certain things that they have to be able to have accomplished in order to yes. meet their certification from the county perspective. Right, so when it comes to solid waste and recycling efforts, we can help you to make sure that you're going to meet those requirements. Got it. Now you guys have uh, information on, on the city's website, yes. do you not, about uh, what some of the cr um, opportunities are and the things that people can do and what? We do, there? yes, okay. yes, and I believe you have our website we, yeah, address. Yeah, I've got yes. it written down here somewhere, but it's, uh, what is it, mvrecycle.org. mvrecycle.org, yeah. And one of the things that we can do for businesses also is we have some product <laughs> that we can <laughs> offer for free. And one of the things that we have is, uh, this is um, a small garbage can. And what we can do is supply you with some of these and you actually hang these on your existing garbage can. That becomes your recycling bin. Oh, that's good. And this becomes your small 
garbage bin. It, and it, it's a visual reminder right. that we're trying to throw away less and recycle That's more. Right. That's so right. So now, you had mentioned a statistic to me at one point about the, the percentage of... Uh, uh, success, or I think with, with the word diversion? Diversion, yeah, that's the word we use in the state of California to measure um, how much waste we're not putting in the landfill and instead we're diverting away from the landfill. So um, they measure that by percentage. And in Mountain View, uh, our current percentage um, measured in 2006 is 72 percent. Wow. So that Fantastic. means our residents and our businesses are doing a very good job of recycling and reducing waste. That's great. Yeah. Now, in working with the uh, with uh, Lisa and the yes. Green Business mm -hmm. Program, do they contact you and say we've got somebody out here that wants to get certified? Do you contact them and say we've got some business out of here that have expressed some interest, or does it go both ways? It works both ways, definitely. Sometimes a business will just call us for a uh, recycling program advice or a waste audit, and we'll go speak with them and we'll say, hey. You guys are doing pretty good. Are yeah? Do you know about the Green Business Program? Are you interested? We can, we can hook you up with that. And a lot of times they are. Uh, and sometimes they'll have contacted the county Green Business Program first, and then we need to get involved to help with the waste audit and Got the recycling it. part. Great, Serena. I want to ask you a couple questions sure. now because you're with PG&E, mm -hmm. and clearly that's where the energy activities mm -hmm. come from. Lights, um, uh, you get. Uh, natural gas usage, right. etc. So, tell us a little bit about what you uh, find in your working with the Green Business Program. How how does you know wh what what is the, um, the things that go on? That people call you and say, "I want to do this," or <laughs> um, it, it works a variety of ways. But people do call in and tell us um, they want an energy audit. They want to know how they can reduce their usage, and also Lisa sends us companies that are interested in being a green business and one of the requirements is that they have a PG&E audit, energy audit. So what I do is I go out to the businesses and look for anything, lighting, air conditioning, um, if they have servers, anything that uses energy, mm -hmm. I can look at and make recommendations on how to make it more efficient or what to replace um, with more energy efficient equipment and also offer rebate programs. So there's rebates, money that we give back to them for being energy efficient. Yeah, now that's an interesting point because I don't know if a lot of the business owners out there know about that already mm -hmm. or if it's, um, I imagine that there's more uh, in awareness and information going out about that. But tell us a little about these rebate programs. Are these things funded through PG&E? Are they state funded? Is, how does this work? They're funded through a charge on the bill called a PPP charge, which stands for Public Purpose Programs. And so it's a charge that every customer, whether they're business or residential, pays into. It goes into sort of like a pot of money for the state of California. And from that, these rebate programs are funded. So what we like to tell customers is pretty much you're already paying for it, yeah. take advantage of it. Okay. Um, so pr anything, almost anything that's energy efficient or that's going to help you save energy is eligible for a rebate. Whether it's um, uh, just a cookie cutter one for one rebate or something more complex, we have something called a calculated rebate that pays you based on how much energy you save. Oh, okay. So a business, when you go out and you do an au audit for a business, mm -hmm. you'll help them determine how much energy they're utilizing with their present configuration. Mm -hmm. And then you can project for them what their savings will be uh, if they make a change. Exactly. That's awesome. okay. exactly. So here's an interesting question for you. PG&E is obviously in the energy business and you make your income from selling energy. Mm -hmm. So why is PG&E so interested in helping people conserve the utilization of energy? Well, it's reliability and sustainability. We want to be a reliable utility. We are measured on how reliable, how reliable we are, it's really important to our customers to have power that's not going to be interrupted. So the more load that is on our circuits and our system due to in inefficient equipment, growing population, etc., the worse it is for us. And sustainability, we want companies to stay here in our territory and not have to move their business elsewhere because the rates are so high because we have so much energy use, we have to increase the rates to increase the transformers or lines to or provide more energy. Or buy it from some other source. Or buy source. it from right. an outside source, right. Uh, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Now you've touched on an interesting point that we're going to get to in a minute after I speak to Karen, and that is population growth, mm -hmm. because that's going to have a significant impact on this program here. But Karen, let's talk now about the Santa Clara Valley Water District. <laughs> I did that right. Excellent. Time, you, did. <laughs> you got that okay, right. Great. And your group's responsibility is to manage um, 
the the utilization and, and the, the actually the water resource here mm -hmm. in in this county is that correct that's right we're the water wholesaler for Santa Clara County and there are many different water retailers uh, that then sell the water to businesses and residents throughout the county but we're the water wholesaler we uh, take our our water from local sources and also from imported sources such as the the um, Bay Delta and uh, we treat it at one of our three water treatment plants put it into uh, pipes and, uh, and then when you turn the tap hopefully <laughs> you'll have enough there it is that's okay. right so now this is a resource that um, everybody needs right and from what we see in the news and we watch with the you know what the weather has been like it seems that it's um, not as plentiful as it may have been a few years ago in fact yes uh, just <laughs> yesterday uh, the governor uh, went forward and said uh, there he declared a statewide drought in California and so it's um, it's imperative more than ever right now for everybody to do their part to use water wisely and right. We have many, many different programs set up, just like PG&E does, to help our customers use water wisely. And uh, the best thing anybody can do is go to our website, valleywater.org, and if you're a business, we have programs for you, rebates, free surveys, audits, and if you're a resident, same thing. Mm -hmm. Go to our website, there's lots of resources that we can help uh, have you uh, reduce. We're asking all of our um, uh, businesses and our residents in Santa Clara County this year to save 10 percent of their water. We're asking them please the usage. conserve the usage so that if we have another dry year next year we'll be in a better position, we'll, we'll be okay. Uh, no, no, nobody wants to go to mandatory rationing no, so we're trying not. to avoid that. That's right. Yeah. So now with respect to the green business program, uh -huh. is water conservation is a specific area within the criteria that they have to meet, right? Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so when you go into a business, what are the mm -hmm. some sort of things that you look at to uh, assist them in being more uh, efficient? Well, one of the things that we do is we do a quick um, plumbing inventory, and <laughs> we look at uh, toilets and faucets and any sort of water use indoors. And if they have old equipment, we make specific recommendations on how to get that equipment up so that it's more, um, it's more efficient. We have a free toilet program right now. Okay. So if businesses are out there and they have old inefficient toilets, we'll change them out for free. And we'll put in high efficiency toilets that have been tested and they're great. People love them. We put in over 7,000 of them in the last four years in Santa Clara oh, County. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, there's quite a few. We also look at outdoor water use. Uh, outdoor water use accounts for almost half of the water use on the residential sector. On the business side, it's less than that. But for residential sector, it's about half of your water use is going outdoors to your landscape irrigation. So we want to help you make that efficient as well. We have tons of programs for that, that too. That makes sense. Makes sense. So, Lisa, let's talk a little bit now about how all this fits together with respect to the program. Now, you had shown me uh, a couple of um, um, checklists, I think they are, that, mm -hmm. that are used by the business to go down and there are certain things that are defined as possibilities for right. them in in these given categories so could you give us a little highlight on what the categories are sure and sure first it first and foremost it's a compliance plus program so businesses have to be in compliance with all environmental regulations from there they have to meet an, a certain number of standards in energy conservation water conservation recycling and solid waste reduction and that well re solid waste reduction and recycling mm -hmm. and then also pollution prevention um, we've actually updated our checklists recently so in the energy section it used to be an optional item for people to have t8 fluorescent light bulbs it's now a requirement oh, okay. and pg e offers great programs for that um, and in the water section it used to be optional that people had the 1.6 gallon per flush toilet now it's a required measure as well so as the times change, we try to update our checklists to reflect the newer technologies and really make it a, a significant program that has a lot of meat to it and it's not just something anybody can do. We want to have some, some good hard things for folks to do that has some meaning to it. Great. And then when they do get their certification, then they are able to have their name up on uh, the website and they get That's to correct show the green business logo and, and that sort of thing, is that Absolutely. correct? Absolutely. They also receive a nice frame certificate, a window decal that they can put in their window so that their customers and clients know that they're a certified green business. 
What we ask is that all the people in a company really understand what it is that their company did to become green so that anybody who walks through that door and sees that decal is able to, if, if asked, easily explain, explain it. what it means to be a green business. Right. So, um, and then we of course have our recognition events either both with the cities at the city council level, and then we do an annual uh, recognition event f uh, with the county board of supervisors. Got it. So they, they get some really good positive recognition out in the community as being a good partner. Great. So ladies, let's. L I want to ask a question about the fiscal impact for a business. Mm -hmm. Now you've each t you know, t you know, talked in some way about um, um, conservation and using less energy, well, less water, solid waste, and et cetera. Can we translate that into some type of fiscal impact for the business? Does this become something t that if you do it, mm -hmm. um, it, it's good for your bottom line? Yes, it, it, it's, there's absolutely no question that the reason to, do, uh, to, to become a green business for, um, for any business in Santa Clara County is that it's going to save you money in the long run. And it's wonderful to be a good uh, environmental steward, and that's great. There are many great social reasons for becoming green business and doing the right thing by the by the the earth. But honestly, it'll save your business money. We've seen that time and time again. In fact, our water surveys, when we give them back reports, we uh, often do a cost benefit analysis, and we say, if you make this change, here's how long it'll take your return on investment. And it's generally, <laughs> many of these measures are under a year. Wow. So after that, you're making money. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, yeah. we do the same cost analysis on the sheet on how much energy it'll, it'll save, which amounts to dollars. We also do, this is how much money in the course of one year, three years, five years, that you'll save by reducing your energy use on your, on your bill. Fantastic, right. and the yeah. same is true. Well, and when it comes to, to recycling and garbage, if you have a recyclable and you put it in your recycling bin, we're going to take it away for free. If you put that in your trash bin, we're going to charge you charge to take it, it away. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. So the reality is there's actually a compounding effect for the business here. It's not just, you know, one thing that's going to save. When you put it all together, it becomes a, a significant uh, savings for them. Right? right. Um, I guess yes. It Absolutely. really seems yeah. like there's a lot of truth to that. Yeah. So, and now not only are they uh, able to use the designation of a green business, mm -hmm. um, it saves them cash. And I would think from a marketing perspective, it's probably a good thing too, because there's a tremendous amount yeah. of, of uh, social awareness mm -hmm. right now right. of the need to do things that are environmentally friendly. And the business that has that logo on it, I think may have a chance to uh, uh, draw some clients in that they may not otherwise get. Have you, yeah. have you seen that? In yes. The mm -hmm. yes, definitely. Okay, good. Yeah. Serena, I have a question for you. Tell us a little bit about this poster that's over here on my right, the uh, Climate Smart Program, because that ref refers directly back to what we're talking about now, mm -hmm. does it not? Yes, uh, so Climate Smart is a voluntary program that uh, customers can, um, it's, a, it's an extra, I don't want to say charge on your bill, but you can volunteer to pay into it and it offsets your carbon uh, emissions, so it makes your energy use carbon neutral. Oh, okay. Um, and it invests. What it does is 100% of the dollars you pay into the Climate Smart program go to invest carbon projects. So right now we have two uh, forest preservation uh, contracts that we have son signed and dealed. We're in negotiations to do methane gas capture oh, great. and uh, reforestation. And those are funded by virtue of the, that program? Mm -hmm. oh, well, so that's the fantastic. customer can pay into that program and 100% of the funds are guaranteed to go to climate programs and that's um, verified by the California Action Registry. And it sounds like at least p some of those processes are there to uh, find alternative sources of fuel mm -hmm. for the, to power the generators to generate mm -hmm. the electricity. Well, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. okay. So customers, it's, it's a really good thing. Uh, we have a lot of sign-ups. We have a lot of big name companies that have signed up, Sierra Nevada, oh, eBay, uh, huge companies great. have signed up. Um, and smaller businesses and residents are, are signing up too because they understand the importance of reducing your carbon emissions. Great. Karen, I want to ask you a question about the water. Where do we get the water for the valley? Well, about half of our water here comes from, uh, originates in, in Santa Clara County. Uh, oh. So we have groundwater sources, um, uh, our underground aquifers. We also have surface waters. We have uh, something like nine uh, reservoirs. We have lots of creeks. 
um, and uh, 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 most of which flow into the San Francisco Bay. Um, so about half of our water comes from, from here, from local sources, and then about half of it comes from the uh, uh, San Francisco Bay Delta. So that's basically from uh, the Sierras and runoff in the Sierras that finds its way to the Bay Delta and it eventually comes here to the county, which we treat in one of our water treatment plants. And do you have any sense of what the, the, like the water usage rate is here in the Valley? How much water do we use in, in this county? Uh, you know, d is there a, is a lot. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we have about 1.8 million people here in the county, and that number is growing. Yeah. And uh, for the average homeowner in uh, Santa Clara County, uh, for a single family home, uh, uh, four, four people, each of those people on average uses about 100 gallons of water per person per day. 100 gallons per person per day? It is a huge That's number. That's a lot of water. I know. Uh, people are always thought? astonished when yeah. I tell them that number. And it's just because we have our big lawns and uh, we have so many different sources of, of uh, water in, inside our homes uh, that, you know, that we use. We have the showers, we have faucets, we have uh, dishwashers, clothes washers. It all adds up. Indeed. Well, let's talk about that relative to population growth. And I think Karen, uh, uh, Laurie, excuse mm -hmm. me, I want to yes. have you comment on this as, as it pertains okay. to landfill and stuff like that, because you talked about that a little bit earlier. But right. we've got a chart here. Uh, this came from, uh, this, this is the growth projections for Santa Clara County, and this came from the uh, uh, county planning office, right? And what it indicates is that our population is definitely going to grow. And I think the number was something like, uh, what, some some for some huge percent twenty five percent or something like that or or, or so between now and uh, yeah thirty five percent between now and two thousand was it thirty thirty yeah yeah so here we are it's two thousand eight so we're not that many I mean twenty years really right yeah about mm -hmm. twenty years mm -hmm. twenty two mm -hmm. and um, thirty five percent increase in population where are the people going to go and what impact is that going to have on power usage on water usage on landfill yeah. It's going to have a lot of impact. Um, here in Mountain View, we have assured landfill capacity uh, through the year 2021. But after that, it, it, it may or may not be assured. So, um, and generally, people don't want new landfills in their backyard. So if we don't um, either save our landfill capacity or reduce the amount of waste we're putting in it, we'll have to go farther and farther out to find landfill capacity, which means we're basically moving our garbage in carbon spewing yeah. <laughs> vehicles <laughs> to to take it to a landfill so but e even more than that um, it's a, it, the fact that we're burying our resources is is rather alarming I mean if we cut down a tree to make a piece of paper or we mine ore to make aluminum and then we use it once and we bury it in the ground it simply doesn't make sense mm -hmm. from a resource management standpoint to do that so it's about retrieving those resources and make sure that we use them over and over again. Which makes a lot of sense because right. then that also have an economic ripple effect as right. well to be able to reutilize those things. And now, it saves energy too. Yeah, and, and energy and water are not, uh, I don't know if you can look at them as renewable. You can <laughs> <energy>. actually. <laughs> Funny you should say yeah. that. One of the, one of the um, uh, components of our water use efficiency program is water recycling. Mm. And we use recycled water mm. here in yeah. Santa Clara County, in fact, here in, in Mountain View uh, mm. on golf courses. Oh, okay. And uh, city parks. Right, yes. Um, there's mm -hmm. plenty of places that in Santa Clara County that use recycled water. It's not for drinking water purposes. Right, it's for um, putting on parks, putting on golf courses. Washing the car and the, and the car washes and stuff like that. You can can you do that too? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> okay. Not yet. It, it's for it's for putting uh, for irrigation purposes right now. Non-potable water. Yeah. Non exactly. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Fountains too. Fountain. Okay. Good. So, Lisa, with respect to these things, mm -hmm. the, the these the, the population growth means there's going to be a lot more businesses right. too. What uh, planning is is the group doing? The, what is the green business program looking at into the future, and how how can uh, it be utilized, and how can then the public take advantage of the program to help mitigate the impact of a 35 percent population growth? I think the more we educate businesses on conservation me methods, the more likely that we're going to be able to conserve some of those resources. So I, I can see it just 
kind of having a snowball effect. But of course, in order to certify more businesses, we need more resources for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a catch-22. Um, but we're we're committed th for the long haul, absolutely. And the more again, the more education we can give to businesses, the more assistance through programs like PG&E and the Water District and the City of Mountain View, the better we're going to be. And and I think that we'll be able to now, to handle capacity. Some of that education can come f from people going to your website, can mm -hmm. I? I mean, yes. you have a lot of information on your website yes. about the program, about the check sheets, and all that sort of thing. Do right. you not? Right. Okay. So, if, but just if, if someone is interested in that, they can just go up to your website. They can research some information, right. then they can contact you and exactly. say, hey, I want to find out how I can become a green business. Is exactly. That, okay, great. Um, I want to ask you a little bit about types of business now. We only have a couple of minutes mm -hmm. left, but, but it's not just, um, you know, Office Max or those kind of people. Right. Any kind of business, both um, home-based businesses as mm -hmm. well, I think you had mentioned, yes. are able to get certified, right? Right. We currently have checklists for office, retail, um, hotels, motels, uh, restaurants, landscape companies, auto repair, auto body is a new one, print shops, um, who am I forgetting, <laughs> um, and um, gosh, I feel like I'm missing a big one, but um, we have... Did you say restaurants? Did yes, say restaurants. Did. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's all of them, um, landscapers restaurant and uh, home based businesses and we also have a remodeler checklist oh, okay. which is, is a fairly new one. Oh, and dental we just started oh, doing dental okay. and we actually can do a garment cleaner as long as they're using newer technology such as wet or co2 cleaning um, anything outside of that we definitely couldn't certify anything with a perk machine so there are lots of different kinds of business and from what you just yes. mentioned you've actually expanded the kinds of business that you're right. able to certify in the program so you're I, uh, that implies to me that the group is going out and identifying and setting st standards right. for other kinds of businesses is that correct exactly and it takes a long time to develop a checklist it's not something we do kind of willy-nilly we have to get all of our partners to um, buy into it and it goes up to a hazardous waste committee for final approval but um, it, it's kind of a lengthy process so there are a couple of things that are a little outside of our our purview the program was initially developed for small to medium sized consumer oriented businesses mm -hmm. so things with really complex issues are a little outside of our scope right. but we try to work with as many businesses as possible but the fact is that there's a huge number of those smaller kinds Absolutely. of businesses here and with a 35 percent population increase you know that there's going to be a lot more right. of them yes. coming down the I pike too i think yeah fifty-two thousand small businesses in santa Clara county right now and growing <laughs> and growing well listen ladies i really appreciate your coming and joining us today serena Lisa, Karen, Lori, it's been fantastic having you here. I've learned a lot about this process. I hope that you folks out in the audience have learned more about the program in itself and what the uh, resources are that are available to you to reach certification and even if you're just a homeowner, to do things that are going to reduce your consumption and help you become more environmentally friendly. So thank you very much for joining us here on Reference Point. I'm your host, Dave Cokerhook, and we'll see you again next time.